To be able to measure which one performs better and how much better it performs, I'm measuring the exposure, the stabilization, the HDR, the active stabilization, the night videos, the 8K, the microphones, the Instagram performance and the battery life. At the moment we have very dynamic environment, we have very dark shadows and very bright sky because it's a sunrise, so it's perfect to check the dynamic range of the phones and how they handle the shadows and the highlights at the same time. The S22 Ultra has the tendency to darken the shadows, especially when you have a high dynamic environment. When you have very bright highlights and dark shadows, the phone is crushing the shadows, on top of that is adding a lot of artificial sharpening. All of this was ruining the picture of S22 Ultra and when you compare it to the iPhone, it was night and day difference. This year the situation is completely different. In some cases the S23 Ultra was colder than the S22 and in some cases it was warmer, but in 100% of the times I preferred the white balance from the S23 Ultra. The other huge improvement was the sharpening and the shadows. The shadows were much brighter, but you didn't lose dynamic range because of that. There was only one situation where the phone didn't handle the shadows properly. It was when I pointed it directly at the sun. It really overexposed the whole image and became very muddy. I'm not sure is it because of the coating of the lenses or the algorithm of the exposure, but that's easily avoidable if you underexpose a bit the image. We just came to the most beautiful lake in Bavaria and I want to check the vlogging setup with the phones. I want to see how it's the front facing camera and how the microphone sounds. I'll stop now walking in the snow because I'm creating a lot of noise. It's really beautiful how the sun is shining here through the trees right here. It's amazing view. The light is perfect to check the flaring of both phones. I guess the S23 Ultra has a little bit less flaring than the S22. I wonder how the microphone sound, is there some improvement? Let's go and check the active stabilization. It's good that we have a really good case on that phone. It's so hard to find a stylish case that also protects your phone. They have four different cases and each case has a hidden feature. Let's start with the most heavy duty one. It consists of two parts. You have a really nice edge that goes above the screen, so if you drop the phone face down, you're 100% sure that you'll not hit the screen. The camera lenses are very well protected, there is an edge that goes really higher than the lenses. And there is a hidden feature, there is a small tripod here when you watch a movie. You have two transparent cases that are much thinner. If your phone is a different color than black, this is the case for you. And the tripod works really well. I can directly see that this one is very jerky, the stabilization on S23 Ultra is so much better. Just check the phones now, I'll shake them. Check that jerkiness here, like that phone is so much better. Oh yeah, the difference is definitely night and day. I just switched to the 10-bit HDR mode of the Samsung and I'm so pleasantly surprised that with the new one they fixed all the issues I had last year. Now I'm recording with the front-facing camera and I'm in HDR mode on the S23 but the S22 Ultra doesn't have HDR on the front-facing camera. On the S23 I can record 60 frames per second 4K. Here I can record only 30 frames per second 4K. The HDR mode on the new one is like... It's really good. The HDR is very easy to work and edit from both phones, but now I can use all the frame rates and all the resolutions with the HDR, that point goes to the S23 Ultra. The next point is the stabilization and here the difference is night and day. When you look closely the footage from S22 Ultra you can notice a lot of jitters and they are very prominent in the dark part of the videos. The phone relies a lot on digital stabilization, but the digital stabilization works the best when you have a ton of light because it needs high frame rate. So that phone footage compared to S23, unbelievable difference. Stabilization point goes to S23 Ultra. Next we have the active stabilization and here I'm disappointed in both phones. The footage is very muddy. Of course the S23 Ultra has the better resolution, the better stabilization, 
So the footage is more usable, but still it's very muddy. That's a mod I will not use. So here I'm not giving a point to anyone because I'm really not satisfied with the footage. Maybe if you have a ton of light, because I was recording in the forest, but it was still sunny. I dislike how both phones handle that mod. Next, we have the 8K video. And finally, I can say that we have a usable 8K with the S23. The S22 Ultra handled the 8K horribly. We had a lot of rolling shutter and I was really not happy with the image quality. But when I compare it to the S23, it's fun to use. You have a 30 frames per second that looks amazing and you don't have that rolling shutter. Next, I tested the night videos and here I pushed both phones to their limit. I went at night when there was a fog and the visibility was no more than 20-30 meters. When the lights were shining, they were creating a lot of halo. It was really hard focusing. Most of the time when you film at night with those phones, you get way better result than me because my environment was really challenging. With the night videos, I didn't see a huge difference between the both phones. Of course, the S23 Ultra had a slight advantage, but it had it because of all the other features we discussed earlier. But purely discussing the night videos, they were very close to each other. I would say here that it's a draw with slight advantage to the S23. Both phones have quite good microphones, but they changed something this year with the S23 and I have the feeling that my voice sounds a bit richer in some cases with the S23. But here also the difference is not that dramatic. It's not like night and day difference. So I would say it's a draw, it's a personal preference, but I like more the S23. Next, we have the Instagram performance. Here, the S23 Ultra is way better than the S22. If Instagram is important to you and you want to see exactly what is the difference, check the video here. Testing the front-facing camera, the portrait video. Increasing it to the maximum. Portrait mode is definitely improved, you have better edge and better resolution, you can record now in 4K, but it's quite far away from a real camera, but it's getting there. Both phones survived the whole day filming and they had even battery to carry the whole next day. When I picked the S22 Ultra, I wasn't surprised that I still have battery, but I was so surprised to see the difference between the two phones. That one had around 30% of battery, 31, 32. When I picked the S23 Ultra, the difference was double. That phone had 57% battery. Now the biggest question, is it worth to spend double the amount of money and buy the S23? The S22 Ultra will be perfect for people who are using the camera from time to time. When you go on vacation for family events, that phone is a beast. If you're a content creator and the video performance is very important to you, the S23 Ultra will do much better job. I hope the episode was helpful. See you in the next one. Bye.